All right, so we are live at uh, Facebook stream and also Instagram. It's actually the first time I'm doing the Instagram live TV and I actually find it's kind of hard to do because I have to, I don't know what where to look at. You know, I have a webcam here and I also have to uh, hold the camera in this way. You can see this is in front of me. I have a webcam here, my screen, my two other screen, my two other screen. So basically, yeah, this is my work. This is my workplace. As you can see, I have a lot of screen here and which is very uh, interesting because it has something to do with what I'm gonna talk about. Um, but first of all, for those of you who, who are in Toronto, today is crazy, really, really bad weather. So cold and wait. So uh, it's very, uh, it's gonna be a very cold winter. And unfortunately, I'm going to be here all the way until next year. I'm not going away this year, so I guess I have to uh, enjoy the coldness. All right, so um, the reason I show you the screen because I have uh, got, a, I got a question from uh, from uh, people who follow me way before. And they asked me, how do I train nowadays? Like what kind of software or uh, computer that I'm using? Now, I just show you the screen. And to be honest, nowadays, I don't even trade in front of my desk anymore. Because nowadays, I actually just use a laptop. And, and uh, it has a lot to do with your trading style. But I don't, I, you know, I used to have like one, two, three, four, five, six. I used to have six screen. That's because when I was doing day trading or when I was scalping and I have a lot of screen in front of me. Now as a swing trader, I don't really, I just need a laptop. And I, I'm not even in the market all the time. Uh, in terms of software, what I'm using nowadays, the only thing I'm using that is not free is a trading view, is this software. And honestly, you can also find a, a, a charting software for free. You don't need a, a paid version. For me, just because I, I, used, I used to use it for a long time, so I'm just kind of getting used to use this software. Um, but you definitely don't need to use it. Uh, other than that, I used to subscribe to very expensive news feed like routers and also have a, um, I forgot the name. It's a, it's a, it's a rain squawk. So basically it's a live streaming from London where they feed you all the Forex news. Right now I just use, you know, Bloomberg. Uh, I use Forex Life. Forex Life is great. If I have to say one of the most important trading tool for me is Forex Life. It's a, again a free website, but if you want to know what's happening in the market in session, you know, because lots of you trade Forex, you know that it goes around in different session. You have a London session, yeah, you have a, a European market, you have an uh, Asian market, you have a US market. And the bad thing about Forex Life is you can go in, just do into session wrap. So it's forexlife.com slash session wraps. And you can just quickly view what happened. You know, Forex American, that's American session last Friday. And if you go down, you're able to see a European session. And if you go down, there'll be an Asian station. So basically, it gives you a very quick overview of what's happening in the market. And why is it important? Because pretty much that's the way you have to think about the market uh, in terms of Forex. You have different traders globally. They live in London, they live in Europe, they live in European time zone, they live in the New York Eastern Standard time zone, and they live in the Tokyo, Hong Kong time zone. And the way they look at the market is precisely like how I do it and how you should do it too is they wake up in the morning, you know, they go to the, they go to the bank and they want to know what had happened. So if it's a, you know, European trader or if it's a, let's just say if it's a Europe, uh, if it's a North American trader, you know, he wakes up in the morning, he wants to know what happened during the London hours, uh, vice versa, right? If it's a European trader, he wants to know what happened to the Asian hours. So basically this session wrap, it will give you a very good market sentiment. So you will be very, very easy to grasp what had happened, what is the current risk sentiment. And that way it's very, uh, 
it's very fast for you to have a bigger pictures. And if you're trading in the microeconomics like me, then it's a very good tool to use. So that's that's one of the tool I'm using. And again, it's free. Other than that, Forex Calendar, you know, Forex Factory, it's great, great tools. Now, a lot of people use Forex Factory incorrectly, right? They like to look at the color because if you look at Forex Factory, it tells you, oh, the important news will be in red and then the uh, second one will be in orange, the medium, and then it will be yellow. But I think you should ignore the the, uh, the color because whether the news is important or not, it, it is not set in stone. You know, it really depends on the market. Sometimes the CPI is important because everybody's looking at the inflation data, but a lot of time it's not important. For example, if you're trading British pound right now, what would be the most important thing? It's the election. So all the fundamental news has very little impact for trading the market. And that's why you don't want to blindly just follow this color. Uh, but other than that, I love forexfactory.com because it gives you a very nice layout for the week. Okay. And other than these two, pretty much I sometimes use trading economics. Again, a free website, great resources. You can read a lot of news here. It gives you these live updates. And that's pretty much really all the software I'm using now, uh, 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 all the software I'm using nowadays and plus trading view just to draw the chart. So let's see. So this week, um, yeah, so I hope that answered that question that I got from this, this person that asked me. Uh, again, it really depends on your style. And if you are, yes, if you're a day trader, if you're a scalper, you do need a lot, a lot more screen the speed is very important, so you don't want to use a, 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 you don't want to use a free news feed because you will always be lagging than other people. Like if you're one of those traders who trade, you know, down from payroll or you trade like ECB meetings, then yeah, you, you know, I, I I've been there. Like I, I paid the service, but I also turn on the free broadcast and the paid premium news is like thirty seconds faster then you know as i said the bloomberg and that 30 seconds it could be 50 to 100 peeps right it's it's a very very fast things but generally speaking if you are new to forex trading i would really strongly uh well you know what if you're new to forex trading you should do whatever you like at the beginning because it's just to, to get your feet weight but if you are if you are really want to make some money and profit in this market depend on where what the situation is if you don't have a lot of money to start with i would really strongly uh, suggest you not to to do a day trading or scalping because day trading you are you are basically a, you know fighting against people who have a lot more toys a lot more tools than you you know they have a lot of premium services and that's why sometimes i mean myself when i first started i was trying to trade I was trying to trade like non from payroll with this kind of you know free website, and I was like you know keep keep refreshing it, keep refreshing it, and hoping that you know the news will come up. But meanwhile, I, I saw that the market has already moved, so I always feel like oh somebody know the news way before me. How come? And then later on, I, I subscribed to the premium service. I realized yeah, it's because the premium service they have a way faster speed. I don't really know how it works technology wise because I asked them before they say, yeah, they just have a nice, like better technology, but you will get the news faster and you will have a, an unfair advantage. So if you want to scalp, you really want to have a good tools. You really don't want to save on all these things. If you are swing trade like me, on the other hand, you don't need all these expensive things because if you're a swing trader, all you need is be more patient. You need to have more patient. So you want to be able to hold on your trade. Okay, that's the main difference. So I'm not saying that, oh, you shouldn't have all these multiple screens. What I'm saying is you should have the tools that is suitable for you. Okay, so this week, this passing week, I think I placed a couple of trades. Let me take a look at it. Go back to my high quality trade. 
So uh, again, we are heading into December, and that's very important because in about two weeks, the market will completely um, die down, that it will become very irregular. Because once you go into a holiday season, a lot of people are going on vacation. A lot of people, it just, it's just not going to be a regular pattern, regular market. A lot of traders pretty much wrap up um, on mid-December. So you only really have two more weeks left in 2019. And personally, I don't really trade after the, the, the December 15th. I just stop because there's no point to the market. Liquidity will be very thin and there's really no point to trade at the last two weeks. You might as well just enjoy your holiday. Because if you are in profit for this year, great. If you are not, it's also great. You know, you still have next year's coming, so you don't want to catch up, because that will be a very uh, unwise game for you. You will be very emotionally unstable if you're trying to make up your loss in the last two weeks of the year, which I did it before. A lot of people, we all done it, you know, because we feel like oh, we cannot have a red year. So this year, uh, this week, basically, uh, I have I have placed few trades. The biggest one is my the big, biggest one is sorry about that. The biggest one is my uh, my New Zealand trade. So my New Zealand trade, I actually is this one. I actually let me let me uh, let me uh, zoom out the screen. So the New Zealand trade, I actually got in um, November 13th, yeah. So November 13th, it's right here, right right here. It's where I got into the New Zealand trade. So you can see it actually took me quite a while to finally got out of this trade. And we can see New Zealand dollar continue to shoot up. Now, biggest lesson is that you see in November 14, I almost got stopped out in just a couple of pips. What did I do? I did nothing. I still hold it, right? Because when I trade as a, as a swing trader, you really just enter it with the big trend, with the big market. And the, like I said, the only two things you really need to have is you need to have a patient. And you also want, for me personally, I like to have a bigger risk reward ratio. Because then your your if the trade works in your direction, at the end you will feel like way much better. You feel like wow, your your patient paid off basically. So as you can see, this one I have about two point four seven restring reward. So it's a quite nice trade for this week, but it's not a trade enter. It just happened to uh, get out and. The big trend, of course, what's driving the market. I'll talk about what's driving the market later on. No, actually, I'll talk about right now. What's driving the market is very simple. It's all sentimental. Right now, we're heading into the end of 2019. What's really driving the market is, first, the US and China trade negotiation. And that's really driving the stock market to a record height again and again, because people are looking forward for US and China to finally have something concrete. And even though it's just rumors, it's so unstable. But basically, I'll say if I want to sum up the market is that the party still goes on and nobody want to burst the bubble. That's what happened in the global market right now. Everybody knows that the party might end very soon or it should have ended like a year and two years ago. But all the leaders don't want the bar party to end while they're still in position. And I'm not I'm just talking about the president, talking about, you know, the uh, central bankers, the, the central bank uh, chairmen globally. It's, it's not only one country because it's a global trend. Everybody is pumping cheap money right now to keep the economy going. So that's why you have a record breaking point for the U.S. equity market. And because of that, pretty much that's what's driving the market right now. You see the reason New Zealand dollar and Japanese yen shoots up so high. It's not because New Zealand is very strong economically, nothing to do with that. It's just because the risk sentiment is a very positive one. And that's why we see all the New Zealand yen and other yen pair all shoots up. But that also means that once the sentiment change, 
For example, if tomorrow you have you read the headline says that China decides to retaliate U.S. over the Hong Kong legislation, things like that, or like the trade war uh, is is going on again, there's no negotiation, the trade deal falls off, you will see a big reversal in all the Japanese yen pair. So that is a scenario and how I look at the market right nowadays. And that's why I'm saying back to what I was saying that if you look at the, this economic calendar, you should really ignore the color because all the economic data does not weight it equally, right? It really depends on what people are looking at at the moment. So basically, that's the biggest trade uh, for me this week. That's the one that I probably got out. Other than that, uh, November 20th, let's take a look at the calendar again. We don't really have much economic calendar this last week. If I, if I going down right now, the only thing, yeah, I don't really have not much, much going on. I mean, we have a few Australian data coming out that's driving up and down the Aussie dollars. But other than that, it's really not a lot of economic. It's it does have it's it's a very very stable market at the moment. So pretty much, that's the only uh, trade I have for this week. I also got in. Uh, I also got in. Uh, Euro, I see you can see. I also still have my euro dollar short right at the moment right here let me move this away so i've been i've been in a pending order for euro dollar for quite some times you can see i never got filled and it's very very it's, it's a very flat market to be honest with you and um, i'm not surprised and like i said everybody's pretty much waiting to see what's gonna happen so what's going to drive the market Next week or pretty much December, just to, things to look out will be first what's happening in between the U.S. and China, and second thing is uh, pre-exit elections. If uh, which party is gonna win, which will affect the fate of pre-exit for 2020, and that's pretty much the biggest news for these two. And that's how you want to trade for this next next week. Again, remember it's December first. We only have two weeks left. You don't want to trade until the end of December, right? Just wrap up. And if you don't have a good year, that's fine. You still have next year to play. So Euro dollar is another one that I'm in, and I'm still waiting for the uh, UK news to see what's happening in the in the election. Uh, basically, very simple. If Boris Johnson wins. It's a, it's a, it's a positive news for British pound, right? Just because if it's a Labour Party wins, it's going to be very anti-business and that's very devast like devastated for the business sector in UK, which the business sectors has already been so unstable after the Brexit, exit, right? So, so that's pretty much what you look out for. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the trade I have for the Forex. Okay. So, let's see what else. Next week, let me quickly take a look at calendar to see if we have anything important for next week. And uh, again, I apologize if the screen is like kind of shaky because I have to actually hold with my hand. I should get a new tripod. But anyway, it's just the first time I'm doing this live from Instagram. So next week, well, Sunday, we already have the Chinese data and it's 51.8 beating the expectation 15.5 and better than the previous. So immediately, what does that tell me is that it's a very good Chinese data. It's a very good global economic force means that the risk sentiment will continue to go on. And that means that Japanese yen or all the safe haven currency will continue to be pressured. So that's already happening Sunday. And I say it's, it's already Asian, right? Asian is already, uh, yeah, 11.30 a.m. back in Asian zone. Uh, Monday, we have a ECB president speaks. 
Oh, it will have a cash rate from RBA. So it will be an interesting trade for Australian dollar on Monday. And you also have a GDP on Tuesday. So it's a quite exciting week for Australian dollar. And also Canadian dollar, you also have the overnight rate. And non farm payroll will be this week. Wow, so it's actually, oh, and the New Zealand dollar as well. So it's actually a quite, uh, it's actually quite, it's actually quite an uh, exciting week for for the market. You have the U.S. non farm payroll. You have the Canadian unemployment rate, employment data. You have the Australian dollar cash rate. Yeah, so I think that's just three currencies you should watch out for. Um, how do I trade this kind of news? I, de I definitely don't jump in. I really just want to di dissect the sentiment before I enter any trade. But that's what what's happening uh, this coming week. So uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, other than that, I think that's it for Forex. If you have any question, feel free to let me know because uh, I know it's kind of out of blue for some people. If you don't trade, you feel like what's going on? What What is he talking about? So I understand that uh, in terms of real estate, I did another house uh, open, open house today. And honestly, I think the Toronto market it's still quite hot because yeah, it's winter, but it's still a lot of new construction going on, a lot of new condo construction going on. So I think the biggest difference between, if you're talking about the two biggest cities like Toronto and Vancouver, the biggest difference in these two real estate market is that one has an actual business and industry to uh, support it. Toronto, every year, the population grows bigger and bigger and pretty much all the big sectors are here on the East Coast. So that's really a big deciding factor for the city to keep expanding. And that's what's driving the residential real estate market up. And unlike Vancouver, there is way more speculation. There's way more hot money coming from China a couple of years ago. And that's why once they cut down the funding, the uh, the immigration or the foreign buyers that really tanked the market. But we haven't seen that happening in uh, in Canada, in, to in Toronto particularly. Uh, this week, the recent news, we quickly go over it. Some interesting news, you know, basically, basically people are talking about that uh, Toronto housing price that the people don't overpay. So it means that if you see a house listing for $1 million, basically that would be more or less the uh, the sold price. People don't over, really don't overpay pay for that. You know, it sounds like, you know, back then people always think that, wow, Toronto market is so hot, so people pay like 20% more than the asking price. But right now, because I think the information is so transparent and the whole transaction, it really there's no gimmick beside behind it. So people don't overpay the house anymore. You know, and you can you can very easily to see what's the past transaction. So there's no point to price your house outside the equation just to have create a bidding war. You know, the buyers and the sellers, both parties are very educated nowadays. So all these kind of small tricks don't work anymore. So that's why it's quite a stable market and pretty much that's what I read in a lot of news here is just talking about that people, buyers don't overpay for the housing price. And other than that, if you really want to know what has happened in the housing market, you should just go to, like I said, the trading economy. You see, this is all tied together. It, this is not like, oh, you only do Forex, you don't care about real estate or vice versa because it all comes down to what's happening in the monetary policy. That's what's really driving the market. How expensive or cheap is the, the money is, right? So when you read the news, it's all going to affect each other. So if you wanna know exactly what's happened to the Canadian housing market, you can simply go to any news outlet and you pick Canada and you can go into, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, you can go into the interest rate first, just to see. Now, right now, right now, particularly, oh, right here, there's a housing market right here. 
you can you can take a look at how many building permit we have. You know, home ownership rates, housing index, and housing starts. All these are very good data point to know that exactly what's happening in the uh, in the Canadian market. But the biggest sector, the biggest biggest uh, signal is to look at the central bank's decision. And I remember last week Canadian dollar dropped because uh, basically during the Bank of Canada's meeting, uh, the, the the president was saying that basically was saying that we might the rate cut is 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 not off the table. That means that everybody is cutting interest rate, right? If you look at globally, Japan, U.S., New Zealand, Australia, everybody is cutting interest rate. Uh, bank of Canada is, seems to be the only central bank that is still neutral. But last meeting or the minute, it was saying that they might cut interest rate in 2020. And that dropped Canadian dollar. And that created a little bit of panic move for the market, for both the real estate and the forex. Real estate probably not so much because real estate is always slower. It takes about three to six months to reflect in the market. But th this week, that last week, uh, Bank of Canada basically com comes out. It came out to say that uh, they still have a neutral stand for the market. So that's why next week will be very interesting to see exactly what happened to the Bank of Canada's decision. This will be very very important for the Canadian economy and the whole housing market. So we we'll want to take uh, keep your eyes on this because it will really affect both uh, the Forex and the real estate market. So pretty much, that's what I have for this week in terms of the market. Now, uh, I will keep updated for more things and see if you guys are interested to, know, to learn more about the market in general, particularly in real estate and Forex trading. Okay, all right guys, thanks for watching. Uh, this video will be on Facebook page, Instagram, any question you can dm me you can uh basically yeah you can find me anywhere i'm on social media all the time all right have a good night thanks guys bye bye